Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of GCNC Global View. I am your host, Chris Day, co-founder of the Global Cannabis Network Collective, and pretty excited to, to have this edition with you all. Um, we've got some great guests, a new association partner uh, coming on to talk to us about what's going on in Colombia and uh, really throughout South America and the cannabis industry. Before I dive into that, though, I need to also thank um, the other groups that helped make this possible. Um, our sponsor, Ninth Block, who um, is a great agency, very familiar with the cannabis industry throughout North America, based in Denver. Check them out. And our partners at Thermidor in the UK, who help us produce this thing every week. So Thanks to Jamie and Dave over at Thermidor for their ongoing support as well. And now into uh, the topic of the day, Soko Kana. I have the executive president, Miguel Samper. Soko Kana is the Ind Cannabis Industry Association of Colombia. And Miguel, thanks so much for carving out some time. We made the tech work. We we're here. We have voices and faces. It's great. So thanks for coming on. Uh, no, thank you for the invitation, Chris. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, well, very eager to tell everyone how we're doing here in Colombia. And I think we're doing great so far. Yeah. No, it's, um, you know, the first time I came uh, to Colombia for work in cannabis was about now, I guess, five or six years ago. And it's, um, it's amazing to see how far things have come um, from a lot of some, some production, certainly, but a lot of theory into what's become uh, actual practice and now, of course, expansion. So why don't, we, why don't we start there before we dive into the association and, and tell us sort of from your seat and your view, um, what is going on in Colombia? Is this expansion in the market actually going to happen? Yeah, we'll hope so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, 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 I witnessed the, 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 the first steps, baby steps that the, this industry undertook back in 2014 and 2015, because I was I had the honor to be uh, the deputy minister of justice. So as deputy minister, uh, I had uh, to, to draft the first decrees. Uh, that allowed uh, these uh, the enterprises to obtain a license for uh, to produce to cultivate uh, to sell cannabis for medical purposes. So uh, after after a couple of years, uh, the first enterprises uh, requested the, the the licenses, started producing a lot of investment and interested uh, interest came to Colombia. And those were like uh, the, the, the green years, the green golden years of, of this industry for medical purposes. And we, had, uh, we have some challenges to, to face uh, with the last government because those were, um, I could tell to be politically uh, polite, that those were um, learning years. Uh, and, and maybe the last government didn't have this open vision of uh, how cannabis could be a good business, how could help uh, a lot of families here in Colombia to grow, uh, economically speaking, professionally speaking, and didn't have that vision that the present government has, right? So with the change of government past August, the first thing that President Petro uh, uh, referred to during his uh, inaugural speech was a change of policy in, in terms of, of the drugs, a, a, a change in drug policy, I mean, uh, and uh, with the perfect landing gear uh, being the cannabis, the cannabis for adult use. And then he went, uh, a month later, uh, he went to the General Assembly of the United Nations, and there he only conveyed the same message uh, that we need to think and rethink how the policy, the drug policy is being drafted. So right now, uh, right now, with the government, our dialogue with the government is is being very positive in that sense. And 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 in Colombia, is it's a very exciting time to be in this industry because 
uh, a lot of things are happening right now with the new vision of the new government. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, everywhere that we travel with, with the Global Canvas Network Collective, you know, I feel like the globe is in a transition phase uh, at the moment where we, we had that sort of initial rise uh, and now people have sort of got their heads around that. And uh, most people, I mean, in, in the United States, of course, people understand it, but refuse to act. But in places like Colombia, it's nice to see that not only um, is it making sense, but people are actually making action for the betterment of the people in their country, which is um, refreshing because it doesn't happen all that often. So, um, and we have a lot of members, of course, of our organization in, in Colombia. And um, that's part of why we wanted to work with uh, you all at uh, Solcocana as well to try to help further that, that global ecosystem conversation. So, um, you know, for those who might not know exactly, you know, what the association does and the influence it has on, on policy and connectivity to business, um, tell us a little bit about, about the association, how long it's been around, what you guys do, and how, how it all functions. Yeah, well, this association was funded in uh, between 2018 and 2019 uh, because the, the, the growing industry saw uh, that it, there were many opportunities uh, to establish an institutional dialogue with government, but they needed to have the institution to dialogue with government because if every enterprise goes and, and knocks the door of uh, the, the different regulatory authorities here in Colombia, well, the dialogue is going to be uh, bilateral, it's going to be disorganized. Uh, so, so five uh, of, the, of, the, of the, well, the, the first enterprises that got the license funded this uh, association and with uh, with time, with the, over time, uh, more companies saw the need to become part of this organization to have a stronger voice with uh, the different authorities. Nowadays, we are 33 uh, actual affiliates, companies that are affiliated to Asokolkana, and we also have uh, something between seven and nine. Uh, well, two are in the process of becoming our strategic partners. Uh, so uh, Sokolkan is the biggest association, of course, as um, in, in many industries, there are, there are other associations that represent the, the industry interests uh, before government. So there are many associations, but the, the, the ones that uh, follow us, uh, maybe they have three or two affiliates. So we are the strongest organization right now. And also um, uh, many companies that are exporting or uh, let me rephrase that. All companies that are exporting uh, right now cannabis to Israel, uh, Germany, Australia, United States, Canada, uh, they be, they are part of a so-called Canada. So there's not a single uh, enterprise that is exporting that is not part of a so-called Canada, but not our, all of our members are exporting right now. So uh, the the yeah that's a, a, a maybe a, a radiography of the of the association and we have a very fluent and, and open dialogue with this new government. I just got to the association past October uh, because uh, before that I was doing a, a political venture or or adventure maybe. Uh, I ran for for the Senate here in Colombia for a. Uh, Smaller, moderate uh, left wing party, yeah. uh, and after my campaign, I, I well, I didn't get elected, of course. But for a first uh, electoral adventure, uh, the presidential campaign of Gustavo Petro saw an interesting uh, movement and ideas, so they they uh, asked me to join the presidential campaign. So I was very close to the environment of of the political environment that got. Uh, President Gustavo Petro to the presidency, and I think that's one of the reasons that we we could establish a very fluent relation uh, relationship with with the the actual government. And right. even even in in a couple of, of 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 weeks of days, we're going to to be present with the government, supporting the new vision of the government 
at the CND, the Commission of on, on uh, Narcotic Drugs uh, at Vienna. So yeah, it's uh, interesting to see how this uh, symbiosis between the, the private uh, sector and the government is, is working right now. Yeah, you know, and while um, sometimes, you know, specific political efforts aren't always successful when running, I, I have talked to many folks who um, have been in those positions and then have found that their impact and influence can be uh, greater working from the outside and in partnership uh, right than on the inside sometimes. So I'm sure. going to personally congratulate you for the current situation. I think it's great that you're at the in the Thank position you, you are uh, at the association um, because I've had much more success working with folks in positions like yours now than I have with people always fighting the bureaucracy. Um, I, I, I would never be cut out for it. That is one thing I would never be able to do is to fight those uh, daily political battles inside. I've, I've seen them go and wow, it's a lot of hard work. So yeah, it's a lot. And then, and I think that uh, once you are in those positions, you become addict to the adrenaline, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> you, I think you, so. the adrenaline you become an day. addict to something. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if it's adrenaline, ego or what, but um, yeah, it, it does seem to be, it does seem to be a challenge and it's repeated in every country, uh, in every region I, I've ever seen. So, um, yeah. and I, I think it's great you're gonna be in Vienna as well. You know, when we, well, for those listeners who, who don't know, I, I touched on it at the beginning, but um, the GCNC and uh, Sol Kalkana recently signed a partnership so we can work in collaboration um, and help both of us, members of our various organizations to be more productive. And we were talking uh, on a call, I guess about a week, week and a half ago, yeah. about sort of creating these bridges between government and business and uh, between researchers and the business of cannabis and to create that. And I think, you know, steps like um, you all being in Vienna presenting, uh, and then our work with various business conferences around the world. I'm excited to see how that manifests over time in, in knowledge share, because um, I've, I've often found that the businesses don't quite speak the language of the governments um, or the researchers and, and vice versa, which creates this, this uh, separation in, in terms of hitting all the goals. But um, what when you're there and you're you're engaging uh, at that event, what what are you hoping to get out of it? What do you want to see achieved? Uh, well, uh, you know that those those organizations, international uh, uh, bureaucrats, uh, are very very hard to move. Uh, and especially talking about uh, controversial topics such as drugs, right? Because you, you, when you go to Vienna, uh, well, I, I, I've been there uh, four times uh, as, a, as, a, as a deputy minister, and, and, and I was always, um, well, the president gave me the instruction to always promote a change in drug policy, right? Internationally. And everyone was asking, okay, that's great, sounds great, but what are you doing in Colombia? Because you still uh, aerial spraying the the coca leaf cultivations, uh, which has uh, harms over the environment and, and over the the human health. You're still uh, you you cannot produce uh, cannabis for uh, medicinal purposes. Uh, we, we don't even touch the the, the topic of adult use uh, yet. Uh, this this was between 2012 and 2016, right? So yeah. so what are you doing and? Uh, I, I didn't have the answer for that. Right now, the 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 the, the good part about the new government is they are they are proposing a new a uh, changing policy in drug policy, but also they are changing the policy here uh, uh, within the borders. Right, there every four years the new government has to present before Congress a bill called the National Development Plan. It's, it's like the, the chart of navigation for uh, the new government for the four years of the term. And this government included a provision there to ask Congress for special faculties to regulate adult use of cannabis 
to regulate alternative uses of the coca leaf and also medical and scientific uses of other substances. Uh, other so so government has a good speech to tell the world to tell in Vienna the world that they are not only promoting a change in international drug policy but also changing national policy. They they have a lot to show. And we as civil society, as private sector, we're going to be there to do three things, to support the, 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 these, the, the Colombian government's vision, also to exchange information with other cannabis associations or other uh, civil society organizations that are interested in what we are doing here from the civil society perspective and from the government perspective. And on the third place, but very importantly, we we uh, we just joined as a Sokolkano, We just joined uh, an uh, uh, American uh, association organization called Redcan. Is the network of associations here in the um, in in the in the continent uh, that are de devoted to cannabis. So like a Sokolkana, but from Peru, Bolivia. Uh, we also have ah no, Bolivia is not uh, part of it. Uh, we have Peru, we have Paraguay, we have Uruguay, we have Argentina, we have Chile, we have Mexico, uh, Colombia, of course. So it's a it's a it's a good network that uh, we are creating, and we are uh, finishing uh, a document right now as we speak, uh, which we want to present before uh, the the plenary in Vienna, in which we have this vision and this unified claim to our governments on how to handle cannabis. So in, in terms of cannabis for medical use, for medical purposes, we're asking government to harmonize and, uh, and unify the legal frameworks of our countries in order to facilitate access for patients to, uh, to me medicines made of cannabis uh, all around the continent, right? Uh, we're also asking them to, to center the uh, controls and fiscalization over the production, not on the patients, because this is a clear uh, obstacle for, for, for them to access these medicines. And we're on, on the third place, we're asking them to promote a very fast uh, track to register medicines of cannabis uh, before our uh, FDAs, right, so to speak. And we're, for the first time, I think I've never seen this before, but for the first first time, from the civil society perspective, from all these cannabis associations, we're asking governments to regulate adult use in our countries. Uh, so, in Colombia, I, I'm very positive that we're going to be Chris, the third country to regulate it. Uh, but other associations are asking their governments, listen, you have to move in the direction Colombia is moving right now, because yeah. <laughs> because not only the market, but the world is is going that way. Right. It, it is. I, um, you know, I, I live in Mexico currently, but obviously our company is is based in Colorado, uh, mm -hmm. up in the U.S. And I spend much of my time in, in part of the year in Europe. Uh, and I'll be down in South America here not too long. Um, and I am always, I, I don't know, I have much more hope uh, even now than I did say a year and a half ago. And I'm te I tend to be an optimist, right? But we're actually seeing, you know, in South America, when you, when you are looking at people in different countries advocating for continental shifts, you have that in South America. You also have that currently in, in Europe, where you had, um, you know, some smaller countries like Malta make early moves, um, but that sort of opened the door a little bit, and then in came Germany, and now Germany's moving, and of course France has got their pilot going on, and um, you know, I, I see, I see the same kind of consolidation conversations in terms of creating. Um, systems and operations that transfer across countries in Europe. Um, I think between South America and Europe, sort of leading those charges, uh, yeah. eventually, and, and it won't be too far off, I think we'll, we will actually see something again to a global marketplace um, in, in, a, in a real fashion where you're not constantly worried about 
your product, even if it's going through legal channels, being confiscated and that kind of thing. So um, I'm I'm so excited to hear about it and to to see how all of that comes together. It's fabulous. You guys are doing that. Yeah, no, it's great. And I also think like you, I, I mean, the European uh, uh, block that is forming right now, uh, presided by, I mean, uh, Czech Republic is right now leading the way to to from this uh, this alliance to regulate adult use. And I think I'm, I'm also thinking that in Europe in the next 10 years, we're going to be, uh, we're going to see and witness how this market is going to open. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, the, the thing is that you have to overcome, if, if you want to regulate adult use and, and international commerce of cannabis for the adult use, uh, you have to overcome some difficulties interpreting the uh, conventions on drugs, right? The international conventions on drugs. In the European, uh, European Union, you have to overcome also the European uh, legal correct. framework right that yeah. is even more strict uh, than international conventions but we 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 we've been seeing with uh, our friends back in 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 walla and uh, and the transnational institute we've been studying uh, how countries could uh, negotiate an interset treaty between them and the conventions on drugs are okay but if if we want to have bilateral commerce uh, okay. within these uh, interstate treaties, we can do it. And, and I think it's feasible, it's, it's possible to do it even with countries from the European Union. So if governments really and, and truthfully want to advance forward uh, uh, the, the, uh, the international commercialization of cannabis, they can do it through the ways of, of, of uh, an interstate treaty, an interpart uh, yeah. treaty. And, I think and they're that, doing a, it. Yeah. And I mean, we know that many of those conventions, right, were, were drafted in an era that was not particularly well informed about yeah. Yeah. the science and the reality and the benefits of cannabis, right? When, when you're yeah. drafting things basically based on uh, inaccurate propaganda, um, I, it's been nice to see sort of the evolution of thoughts um, and quite honestly, a loosening of the chokehold that has been in place by, you know, certain nations around the world on everything from economics to, to the conversation, right? And, and I think that is continuing to, to weaken so that we really can have more global conversations. So yeah, I, I hope it doesn't take. It is going to be years. very hard, very hard to include in, in those conversations to the the, the Asian uh, kind of opposition to to all this because Thailand is leading the way undoubtedly, yes. uh, but uh, other countries are very reluctant to even open the conversation, to even open the dialogue. China is never going to open the, uh, that dialogue, even if uh, they are right now getting into the, the, the hemp industry very strongly. Uh, Russia is not going to open that door either. So well, it's going to be a difficult conversation with the Asian part of the world, but yeah. still, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very optimistic uh, panorama, panorama if, if we as South America and uh, Latin America, because we included Mexico in that conversation, uh, yeah. or maybe Mexico included us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah, I think you guys can debate that amongst yourselves, but um, you know, I do think um, you could you could take um, you know from from Mexico all through Central America, right? Um, we're having conversations in Costa Rica right now, Panama. Um, all you know, way, the way down to Brazil, the entire Latin American bloc and the Caribbean um, are, are moving forward. And yes, while Asia is going to take time, the truth is like hemp never wasn't a part of China. Hemp has always been there as part of that society. So really to me, I don't see that even as a battle for cannabis or hemp, that's just ongoing sort of geopolitical situations, uh, right. not so much the topic of, of cannabis itself. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a fascinating time to be in the space and to be sort of at the center of some of these 
these opportunities. And I'm very excited that we're getting a chance to work uh, with you guys on these and continuing to expand that conversation. I know we'll have a number of um, content programs for our members. And of course, a lot of that, for those of you who aren't members, you probably should be if you're listening to this uh, and finding it interesting. But even if you're not, a lot of that information gets disseminated out for the public as well. So, you know, Miguel, after, uh, after Vienna, uh, we should circle back and probably do this again. Sure. I know I'll be um, down at a couple of the B2B uh, trade shows here over the next couple of months, um, especially with our partners at Expo Cannabis and the Canna Industry Conference uh, as well. They're in Bogota. So um, we'll have to compare notes in front of everybody on another podcast recording uh, here in, in a couple of weeks. For sure, for sure. I mean, that's what everything of this is about, right? This efforts. Yeah. We have to do it uh, together. Uh, otherwise, yeah. the train will will left us behind, as as it happens uh, once uh, everyone start acting selfish. But in in this industry, and that's one thing that amazed me. Maybe the the thing that amazed me the most. There's a lot of colleague gash. Uh, there's a lot of working together of 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 industries, even if they are competitors uh, from the same uh, market uh, target. Well. They they work together to get everything the, this wheel running and 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 becoming an industry that is unstoppable. So thank you very much again for for our, this invitation and yeah we'll be willing and looking forward to to telling everyone here at the GN uh, GCNC to to well what's happening in Colombia and what Colombia is leading in Vienna. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and I refer to that. Um, cooperative uh, competition is coopetition. It's an important part of the cannabis industry. And um, it's frankly, a pretty healthy way to, to build something new, which is what we're all dedicated to doing. So thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you everybody out there for tuning into the GCNC Worldview. And uh, until next time, please don't forget to subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff. Thanks to Ninth Block and learn more for making this possible. Have a great week, everybody.